Hello everybody, today we'll speak about aliasing. So aliasing is an irreversible signal distortion in the sampling process resulting from failure to meet the assumption of the sampling theorem, and the detected signal is thus an alias of the original signal. So let's talk about some terms here. Sampling frequency. What is sampling frequency? It is a rate at which samples are being acquired per second. So if there's a sampling frequency of 100 hertz, it means that 100 data points are being acquired every single second. The next term is bandwidth. Bandwidth is a frequency range of interest. It is half of the sampling frequency. So in our example, if the sampling frequency is 100 hertz, the bandwidth is 50 hertz. The Nyquist criteria is very important to prevent aliasing. As per this criterion, sampling frequency must at least be twice or greater than the bandwidth. And the Nyquist frequency is half of the sampling frequency. So here, with a sampling frequency of 100 Hz, the Nyquist frequency is 50 Hz. In the audio acoustic world, we are interested in the frequency range of 20 Hz, 20 kHz, because that's the human audible range. And for that, a sampling rate of 48 kHz is followed. Now, it's not exactly twice, it's greater than twice. That's because of the filter attenuation, which we will look at in the end. Now, failure to comply with this requirement results in aliasing. So if you want to capture within this 20 to 20 kilohertz, you must follow 48 kilohertz sampling rate or higher. If you do not, you're going to end up with aliasing. So let's look at digitizing a signal. So in real world, the signals, as in sound waves, are analog signals, but analog signals are made up of infinite points, so we can't just capture them, we digitize them. So while digitizing, we need to digitize it appropriately. And that's where we use this sampling frequency. So if you digitize it properly, you're going to capture the signal properly. But let's say if you use an improper sampling frequency or a very low sampling frequency, this is how the signal would be captured. And the software would think like the blue signal is what, you know, it is the original signal and not the red one. But it's wrong because actually we have the red signal, but due to improper sampling frequency, the software understands that the blue signal is the one that's present. Now, aliasing can be demonstrated in the frequency domain as well. So let's consider two cases, one with and without aliasing. So in the first case, let's say the sampling frequency is 2000 Hertz. The Nyquist frequency is half of the sampling frequency, so that's 1000 Hertz. And let's say we intend to capture uh, the frequency of 600 Hertz. Now, uh, look into this, that our frequency of interest is within the Nyquist frequency. So in this case, aliasing is not going to occur, but let's look at the math anyway. So first, we take the ratio of F over F Nyquist, so that is 600 over 1000, that is 0.6. Next, we take the integer of the ratio obtained in step 1. So now we have 0.6, and if we want to take an integer, it's going to be 0. The next step is to take the modulus of ratio with respect to 2. That is, you divide the number 0 by 2 and capture the remainder value. We call this modulus. Modulus of 0 over 2 is 0 because the remainder is 0. Now, if the modulus is 0 in the previous step, yes, it is 0. So we need to follow the next steps, which is the calculated frequency is modulus of F and F Nyquist. So we divide... 1000, uh, we divide 600 by 1000 and take the remainder, and we get the remainder 600 hertz. So the calculated frequency is 600 hertz. Now, if you observe carefully, in this case, aliasing didn't occur, and we captured the frequency exactly of our, uh, of our interest. The next case is there's going to be aliasing here. So, in order to create aliasing, we need to, you know, break the Nyquist theorem. So we have the sampling frequency of 2000, the Nyquist frequency is 1000 hertz, and we want we are intending to capture a frequency of 1400 hertz above the Nyquist frequency. So it's a perfect recipe for aliasing. So again, we follow the same steps. We calculate the ratio of F over F Nyquist. We get it 1.4. The next step is to take the integer, and integer of 1.4 is we take 1. Then take the modulus, modulus of 1 over 2, and capture the remainder. The remainder is 1. So in this case, you observe that the modulus is no longer zero, it's one. So if it's one, we follow, if it's not zero, we follow a different procedure. So the calculated frequency is F Nyquist minus the modulus of F and F Nyquist. If you do the computation, you get 600 Hertz. And the calculated frequency should be 1400 Hertz, but it's not because there's aliasing. And to show a pictorial representation, it's gonna look something like this. 1000 Hertz is a Nyquist frequency, 
The actual frequency is 1400, but because we are having a poor sampling frequency, we're, we're ending up with 600 hertz, which is actually not true. Now, how to prevent aliasing? It can be prevented by properly choosing the sampling rate based on the bandwidth. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the audio acoustic world, we use a sampling rate of 48 kilohertz, assuming the bandwidth is approximately 20 kilohertz. But if you use the same sampling rate, if your intention is to capture ultrasound, which is way over 20 kilohertz, again, it's gonna result in aliasing. So you need to keep that in mind. If you wanna capture something in ultrasound like megahertz, then you need to use an appropriate sampling rate. There's also something called as an anti-aliasing filter to prevent this from occurring. So it is a low pass filter that removes frequencies that exceed the Nyquist frequency. So this low pass filter will have a cutoff frequency which is equal to the Nyquist frequency. An ideal low pass filter would have abrupt transition between the pass and stop band, but a real low pass filter does have a smooth and gradual transition. If you want to learn more about low pass filter, check the link in the description below. This is a pictorial representation of the low pass filter. As you can see here, the transition between the pass band and the stop band is not abrupt, but it's rather gradual. The green region represents the accepted frequencies. The red region is the filter attenuation. The critical frequency is 80% of the Nyquist frequency. And the filter attenuation is the reason why we say that the sampling frequency must not be twice the Nyquist frequency, but rather 2.5 times the Nyquist frequency. So if you intend to capture up to 20 kilohertz, the sampling frequency is not just 40 kilohertz, but rather 48 kilohertz. So to conclude, aliasing is an irreversible signal distortion in the sampling process resulting from failure to meet the assumption of the sampling theorem or the Nyquist criteria. Aliasing can be prevented by properly choosing the sampling rate based on the bandwidth. All right, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.